Hi, I'm Clara from Online Fabric Store. Our current tutorials so far have been more at a DIY level, but today we're going to kick it up a notch and make professional looking inverted box pleat curtains. The difference is, with professional curtains, you're not going to see any visible stitches on the front. This means a lot of hand sewing, which takes more time, but still any patient DIYer can do it. So let's get started. The materials you'll need are drapery fabric, I'm using P. Kaufman Pavilion Fretwork Tropical Blue. Drapery lining. I'm using Rocklawn Rain No Stain White Drapery Lining. 4 inch drapery buckram. Pin on drapery hooks. Drapery weights. Thread. A hand sewing needle. Pins. Stitch witchery fusible bonding web. A fabric marker. A sewing gauge, which is optional. A ruler. Scissors. Drapery rings. And an iron. Before cutting any fabric, you'll want to figure out the size of your pleats. I suggest cutting a strip of fabric to play with. For this geometric print, I want the pattern to repeat every other pleat. This constrained my options, but I ended up with 3 and 3 quarter inch pleats with 1 and a half inch pleats on the back. If your curtains are more decorative than functional, you can go with the same size pleats on the front and back for maximum fullness. If you want your curtains to be functional, meaning you'll be opening and closing them, going with a smaller pleat on the back is best. This will make the curtains look better when open because the pleats will stack nicely. Now that I know the pleat size, it's time to figure out what dimensions to cut the fabric. The length is easy, just add 13 inches to the desired finished length to account for the hems. The width isn't as straightforward and will be different for everyone. I don't want to completely bore you, so I'll let you know what factors to take into consideration and then I'll go into more detail in the written version of this tutorial. Add 4 inches to the width to account for the amount needed to finish the sides. If you want the fabric to attach to the wall on the sides, measure the return, which is the distance from where the fabric hangs on the curtain rod, to the wall. Having returns looks professional and eliminates the gap between the wall and the curtain. Make sure to add this distance to each panel if you want a return. For my curtain, it's three and a half inches. From here, it's a matter of working with a strip of fabric to make sure everything works out. Since most drapery fabric is 54 inches wide, you may have to seam pieces together to get the correct width. If you're making two curtain panels per window, it looks best to have the full width pieces on the inner section where the edges will meet and the narrower pieces on the outside. Join the pieces before cutting the fabric to the exact dimensions. If you're using a solid fabric, seaming the pieces together is easy with a plain seam. For patterned fabric, you'll want to match up the pattern, which requires more steps. Start by cutting a full width piece of fabric that's 13 inches longer than the finished length. I like to add a couple extra inches just to be safe. Take another piece of fabric and overlap it with the selvage edge of the first. Move it up and down until it's lined up vertically. This second piece will likely need to be longer than the first in order to match the pattern. If the narrower piece will be less than half the width of the fabric, you can cut it in half now. I already did this when making the first curtain panel. Fold under the selvage edge of the overlapping piece so the patterns are lined up. Take note of this distance, then iron a crease the same distance down the length of the fabric. Line up the patterns again. Slide the bonding tape under the edge of the fabric. Check the alignment one more time before placing the iron on the seam. Leave it for about 10 seconds, then lift it, align the fabric, and iron the next section. Continue down the length of the fabric. You can use pins instead of bonding tape, but the fabric is more likely to shift when sewing. Bonding tape makes creating an exact match easier. Draw a line on the crease. Sew on this line down the length of the fabric. 
It's important to stay on the crease so the patterns match up correctly. Open the fabric and iron the seam to one side. Cut off the extra fabric about half an inch from the stitches. You can now cut the panel to the correct length and width. Make sure everything is square. Cut a full width piece of lining fabric to the correct length, which is 5 inches longer than your finished length. Cut another piece to the same length and pin the fabric together with right sides facing. Sew down the length with a half inch seam allowance. Press the seam open. Cut the lining to the correct width, which is three inches narrower than the face fabric. Fold the bottom up 5 inches and iron. Unfold and bring the edge of the fabric up 2.5 inches to the crease and iron again. Fold the hem all the way up and press one more time. Sew down the hem close to the edge of the fold. Create a double folded hem like the lining, but fold up 8 inches, then 4 inches. Unfold the hem part way and tack a drapery weight so it's lined up with the raw edge. Place it about two and a half inches in from the side. Hand stitch the weight to the fabric. It's generally a good idea to use weights in at least the two bottom corners so the curtains hang straighter. You can also use them in between the corners, especially for wider drapes. I'm using a total of four weights. When sewing the hem, the idea is to not have any stitches showing on the front. You can either hand sew the hem with a hemming stitch, or you can use a blind hem stitch on a sewing machine, which is what I'm going to do. Fold the hem under so just a quarter of an inch is showing. Pin the hem so the heads of the pins are overhanging the edge. Put the blind hem foot on the sewing machine. It has this metal divider in the middle. Select a blind hem stitch on the sewing machine. Position the fabric so the quarter inch of the hem that's showing is on the right side of the foot and the fold is against the divider on the left side. As you start to sew, it will stitch several stitches on the right side, then jump over and nip the edge of the fold for one stitch. Continue sewing the length of the hem. The stitches will barely be visible on the front. It's possible to make them even harder to see if you do it by hand. With right side spacing, place the lining so it lines up with one of the sides of the face fabric. The hem should be one and a half inches from the bottom. Pin the edges together. Sew down the length with a half inch seam allowance. Pull the lining so it's now lined up with the other side of the face fabric. Pin together and sew. Iron open the seams on both sides.
Turn the fabrics right side out. Position the lining so it's centered on the face fabric. There should be one and a half inches on both sides. Iron the edges flat. If you have wide curtains, it's a good idea to loosely sew the lining and drapery fabric together in several places. Make sure the fabric is lying flat and pin along the vertical seams where the fabric is joined. Using a long needle, hide the knot and run the needle between the fabrics for about two inches or as far as the needle will allow. Make sure you start with enough thread to sew the full length. Poke the needle through the front and catch a couple of threads and come back out through the lining. Repeat for the length of the fabric. Do the same in the middle of the wider piece. If there's no seam to guide you, mark a dotted line vertically and place the pins along it before sewing. Fold the corners of the face fabric in so it looks like a mitered corner. Hand sew the diagonal fold with a hidden stitch. Next, I'm going to hand sew the bottom of the lining to the face fabric hem. Pin the fabric together. You can use a slip stitch, but I prefer using a long ladder stitch. Hide the knot between the fabrics and come out through the crease of the lining. Start the stitches by going straight down to the face fabric and slide the needle between the layers for about a quarter to a half an inch. Next, go straight up to the lining crease and repeat the same size stitch. Keep the stitches loose so it doesn't pucker. Now it's finally time to start the heading. Fold down the top 5 inches and iron. Cut the drapery buckram a little narrower than the panel and place it under the fold so it lines up at the top. Fold the extra fabric under the buckram and iron. Pin or use a long basting stitch to temporarily hold it in place. Sewing the pleats will hold everything together later. At the end of the wider piece of fabric, the first pleat should start about four inches in to leave room for the leading edge. On the back side of the heading, mark with a pin or a disappearing ink marker. From here, measure in the amount you need for the back pleat. For me, that's three inches. Then mark the size of the front pleat, which is three and three quarter inches here. Continue to mark alternating these measurements. In this case, I'm using the pattern as a guide to mark the three inch segments, which automatically leaves three and three quarter inches between them. If you accounted for a return, you should have that much left at the end. Draw four inch vertical lines at each mark. Fold the fabric together with right sides facing so the first two marks line up. Sew on the line, back stitching at the beginning and the end.
Bring the next two marks together and repeat the process for the rest of the curtain. On the back, flatten the pleats so they're centered on the seams. Now you can either machine stitch or hand stitch the back pleats so they stay flattened. If you want to machine sew, on the front of the curtain, stitch in the ditch, which means sewing right on top of the seam. Repeat for the rest of the pleats. Hand stitching is the better option if you want to be sure the stitches won't show on the front. I hand stitched the first panel I did before this one. To me, the amount of time it took wasn't worth the slightly better looking results. Hand sew the ends of the panel together, ending where the lining starts on the back. At any time after sewing the pleats, you can rip out the basting stitches and snip away any unwanted threads. Hang a drapery hook on your eyelet curtain ring. Line it up on the center of the back pleats so the bottom of the ring is at the top of the curtain. Mark where the drapery hook should be inserted. Measure and mark this distance on the rest of the pleats. Insert the hooks on the marks. Also add drapery hooks to both ends of the heading. Now the curtain panel is ready to hang. You can adapt these techniques to make many different styles of curtains. I'm gonna go put these in my kitchen to go along with the Roman shade, which you can find in another tutorial. Thanks for watching this OFS project.